Hey guys, Tarot here bringing you a 1v1 today. We are on Crossroads. Playing a few days, spawning in the north. We have a Chinese player, which apparently translates to uh, blood mostly handsome. As Ostia, and his loadout is German mechanized, lightning war, and mobile defense. This guy actually, I mean, I've never seen his name before, but he has apparently close to 2,000 games as us there. Currently uh, rank 130. In the south, we have the Don of Gas as the Soviets, and his loadout is Counterattack, Armored Assault, and Lend Lease. Currently uh, close to rank 200. Yeah, 190. And he's going for a conscript I've known to support weapons. So maybe we're going to see a Maxim next. What is the struggle going for, for, for Maxims these days? <laughs> I think uh, probably easier to do this maybe against Ossia than uh, OKW because at least Ossia have to build their tech structure so they don't get off to quite such a strong start and Pioneers are obviously a lot worse than Stern Pioneers so you know you can sp spend that time with your engineer building that structure and not fall too far behind and you don't have to worry about the Stern Pioneers just pushing you off the map completely also the conscript versus greedy matchup it's a bit closer than the uh, conscript and uh, fox greedy matchup the enemy is taking our territory conscripts coming around here for a flank on this green deer looks like he knows he can be a bit more aggressive having caused that machine gun to retreat but should be expecting the machine gun to be coming out of base <coughs> in this direction so I probably wouldn't be going for a cutoff there I probably would have just tried to take position on this wall here try to force the screen here away because he will eventually lose this match up we should do at that range greedy should have the edge and uh, heavy cover being slightly superior in small arms fights to garrison cover. <coughs> Excuse me. Our are Manages to squeak round behind that machine gun with Ura. That's a bit of a surprise. He might be in range of his uh, Our lines of supply are disrupted. tech structure for reinforcement there. At the very least he'll be close. Here he goes. Cycles and some new conscripts. Gonna keep those ones on the battlefield though. Looks like he wants to neutralize this territory point here. His grid is not in action right now. Hiding behind this shrub. I'm not sure if that's intentional or a mistake. Reveals himself now, trying to stop the neutralized. Doesn't quite get there in time. And uh, Don of Gaz getting off to a pretty strong start here overall. Losing quite a few models from his conscripts, but they are one of the cheapest squads in the game to reinforce. In fact, uh, you know, model per model, they're actually cheaper than the combat engineer, slightly. They are 20, and the combat engineer is like 22. So if they only drop team weapons, it is better to pick it up with the conscripts than the combat engineers even. And the conscript models will also be slightly better in combat too. More to go in the town, just knocking down that building so quickly. Now 
And uh, very interesting that he, I mean, just a bad idea to build your tech structure and then not get any units from it. I mean, if you're going to build it at the start of the game, you should at least get something from it. And otherwise, you should just not, not build it, you know? If you're going to spam conscripts, you might as well go full on there and try and cap the map a bit quicker by using the con the engineers to cap instead of building tech. Conscripts getting aggressive once again forcing that machine gun to retreat. Most blood mostly has it really needs to uh work on his machine gun positioning. He's gone for a bunker, he's also starting his tech now, so once the 222 hits the field, the conscript should uh, start to have a bit more trouble. Man, Blood Mercy has him getting quite unlucky in this. Oh, but maybe not. Oh, no, he gets out in the nick of time. But not knocking down any models there, basically. I mean, close to full strength. Losing them now, but causes that green D to lose that engagement. That's the mine there. Drops two models. Not really too good issue. Probably should not be in this garrison here. Only got one window. And uh, being such a small garrison, basically every mod is going to be hit by those mortar shells. Machine gun once again. Forced to retreat. Man, Blood Mostly Handsome is really having a uh, nightmare. <laughs> with his MG42. He's about to lose his conscript squad. No, he gets out in the nick of time. Or does he? Yes, he does. Conscript's getting aggressive here, but stand to lose a lot of models. Very close to his tech structure. Could just backpeel them slightly and... Go for that forward reinforcement, which he's doing. He needs to move his other green deer in there so he doesn't lose control of his cutoff. And uh, crisis averted, but that being said, his map control very, very poor. And we've got a T-70 on the way already. That is a commanding amount of map control for the Don of Gars. For another squad. Did he? Did he lose his pioneer? Oh, he ran over. An, he ran over another mine. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Quite risky playing against Soviets, not getting minesweepers, as we saw the other day in the GCS between uh, Lovnest and Armstrong. <laughs> What a beatdown that was. The territory is out of contact. The enemy is taking our territory. So it looks like Blood Mercy Handsome really wants to get those LMGs on his green it is. Try can understand who will uh Cause him to wreck those concepts pretty hard, but needs those sweepers as well. Building a pack now, fair enough. And I think he started building that before he even saw the T70. Concepts get a nice flank on the machine gun. There are two LMG grenades there for defense. Oh, we shouldn't be clumping on the light cover there. He retreats now. The LMG grenades should be able to take care of the conscripts, but 
needs that pack. Where is it? Oh, he, maybe the rally point was in the wrong location. Uh oh. Oh, Grindies. Okay, I think they're going to get away. Just he doesn't want to chase from risk getting fousted, and pack misses its foot. Well, first shot connects with the wall. Second shot connects with the wall. I think the way that uh, the way that that works is if the anti tank gun rolls a hit, it hits the tank. But if it doesn't roll a hit, and uh, you're relying on scatter for it to connect, it will hit the shot blocker. I think that's how it works. I'm not not 100%. I haven't tested that properly. It's kind of hard to test. I think I'd need like some kind of uh, UI change from maybe from the cheat commands mod, but don't think that's going to happen. So close to that demo charge, but uh, avoids it. And that mortar's starting to rack up some kills. At eight, then get two. Missing another shot there. See when it is quite a small target size, remember. It can be quite hard to uh, land a hit on it. Especially if your shots are you know not even gonna scatter into it. Gotta hit those shot blockers. Misses again. That time at max range. This is a situation where you could perhaps use the uh, Ford med kits. It looks like uh, that's exactly what it's going to do. And you can see they do heal very, very quickly. It saves them, you know, probably a good 40 seconds having to retreat, wait for healing at the base and then come back onto the field. So a good use of the medkits there. By blood mostly handsome. Another demo charge down for the Don of Gars. And uh, blood mostly handsome really needs these sweepers, man. No excuse for not having them now. He's gone for another pack. This should not be necessary. You shouldn't need two packs to deal with one. T70. The enemy is attempting to steal our sector. That being said, the Don of Gas has so much fuel, could just about tech and build himself a T34 right now. If he had the manpower for it all. Conscious once again flanking. Getting behind the machine gun. Pack misses another shot here. Oh, wow, those guys went down so quickly. MG42 at point blank range, point blank, just shredded them there as well as a bit of grenadier support. Conscripts charging in once again. Looks like they're trying to decrease the pack as the number one priority and the T70 to do the damage. And he's got Molotovs there. And just to decrease the pack, T70 up close and personal doing a lot of damage. And this is where the second pack should come in handy but once again he's got the rally point in the wrong location looks like a squad of grenadiers went down there to the uh, T-70 as they were getting a Faust on it and the MG-42 is going to be stolen so both sides taking some losses here but definitely blood mostly handsome getting the worst of it Oh, there's, no, there's no way that was going to survive. Oh, no. It left cover there. I think it would have been in range if he went straight into cover here. And perhaps, you know, if he sn sniped the gunner. That would have worked. And uh, the mortars... Oh! Conscripts go down there. Looks like that was the leftover models from uh, recruiting the machine gun. I'm trying to 
trying to avoid the mortar, but you should just get just just get out of there. It's not worth losing. MG42 for that. Here comes the KV1 for the Don of Gaz, so no no more tick required for him. It's going to be the KV1, but uh, there are two packs. Remember. P4 command tank coming in for blood, mostly handsome. Doesn't stand a very good chance against the KV-1, but uh, will help his unit survive with that command tank aura. Should uh, try to reface his Panzer IV so at least the KV-1 doesn't penetrate it his rear arm all the time but KV-1 missing so many shots firing on the move here second pack faces up KV-1 in a sticky situation here having to back away could go down and it does every shot penetrates there some terrible luck for the Don of Gaz and he loses his first KV-1 Oh, and he loses another squad of conscripts. I think there's three squads of conscripts down from him now. Yes, indeed. And his KV-1. So he was in such a commanding position, but now you can see Blood Mostly Handsome actually has the army advantage now. And just like that, the game has turned around. Got too aggressive. With the KV-1, and the KV-1 is such a slow tank, has trouble avoiding the anti-tank guns. But I have to say, two of those conscript losses were avoidable for the Don of Gaz. So, uh, he's got nothing, no one to blame but himself for this situation. I mean, if he had two conscripts, the army sizes would be much more close to even. And uh, now he's facing off against two packs. It's actually going to be very hard for him to use tanks. Could go for Stalin Sledgehammer, the old B4. Uh, I mean, this is a reasonable map for the B4. You can build it in like uh, quite a safe position. Map's not too long. The scatter should be all right on it. And he's got two machine guns to defend it with. So uh, he may struggle to save up 600 manpower. Oh, maybe not. Demo charge takes down the uh, pioneers. It looks like. Still, the Don of Gaz has no way of dealing with this P4 command tank apart from anti-tank grenades. Looks like he's saving maybe for another KV-1. There it comes, but as I said, fighting against two packs, the KV-1's very poor mobility. I uh, don't think this is the right approach to take. You could tick up, get a Katusha, or of course go for the B-4. Maybe with our SU-76 in support to try to keep the B-4 command tank at bay. SU-76 here having the... Uh, Get a range. Wouldn't have to be so close to the uh, anti tank guns. Before command tank in big trouble here, but uh, Pax moving up. There's one more shot to penetrate. Stops for the maximum accuracy on this last shot, and he gets it, but it's abandoned, and he can't stay in there any longer. Both Pax in position, and both of them hitting Viet 1 could take a target weak point. One of the big strengths of this command is of course the uh, four mother Russia but Don of Gaz doesn't have the infantry for that really. Oh well and he missed a golden opportunity. Looks like he wants to steal the tank but uh, no he gets anti tank grenade on. Okay. So he's gonna try to get in and I was thinking well oh, that's greedy when he could have just taken this LMG 42. Probably what I would have gone for. But I got the anti tank grenade, and that's got to be a big relief for him.
still no sweepers on oh, I, I suppose there's actually a fresh squad of pioneers he's got sweepers on the other one t70 though out here on prioritized vehicles could be about to go down to the pack one more shot doesn't get in time he's gonna lose that squad too <laughs> three squads to demo charges in the space of what like four or five minutes that is starting to look very uh Armstrong-esque Still that mortar has been racking up the kills 19 now for it hitting vet 3 that's when it goes full on beast mode actually I suppose it's not that much of a beast now that you don't get the increased range on the auto fire ok everyone having to back away instantly to the double packs he's got the scout planes in which should help him avoid the team weapon play from blood mostly handsome position his tank so he doesn't run to the packs constantly Wow, he is only just outside the arc, the MG42, but he's getting blasted on by that mortar. Oh man, that could have been a wipe. Gets the cap and uh, going for the aggressive cap over here as well. well that's taking more. He's gone for a second mortar. <laughs> I was like, how is the mortar firing in the middle? And on this side as well, well, I'll tell you how. He's gone for two of them. So when, when you see your opponent go for this many team weapons, you should not be thinking go for another tank. You should be thinking go for indirect fire. You know, he could go for a mortar himself, but he's already uh, lost the variancy race on that, so probably should have been the uh, B4 or the Katusha. I, I mean, if you're going for this command, I'll go for the B4 because I quite enjoy using it, but Katusha probably would be more effective, honestly. Easier to defend as well. Well, Pax take care of that T70. At this stage of the game, probably should, I mean, it was a bit too T70, probably should just be running around on uh, recon mode, trying to avoid those packs, giving him some good line of sight. He doesn't really need it. I mean, he's got 400 munitions here, should just be spamming those planes. No, the other demo charge. I think the squad, do, yeah, does have sweepers hiding behind the LMG, so should avoid that demo charge okay everyone's just loafing around not up to much need some repairs Now with these double mortars, Don of Gaza is really going to struggle to hold on to that central VP. It's going to cost him a lot of manpower every time he wants to cap it. I'm going to charge the defuse there and destroyed. Recon plane coming in. Concert throwing straight up the center. Trying to decrew that pack. Here comes a fresh P4 command tank. This is going to increase the survivability of those team weapons, and maybe that's why the B4 would be better because Katusha rockets do struggle a little bit against the uh, command tank aura, but the B4 does so much damage if it actually lands a hit. P4 command tank aura won't even be a factor. 
command tank just sitting in there. Could go down here. Just gets out of there in the nick of time. How, but how? How did it take that much damage? Maybe it took an anti tank grenade when it was at full health. Because remember, the P4 command tank aura no longer gives health to the command tank itself. That used to be a pretty big problem for it. And those mortars going to town on the machine guns. Greeny's going to try to stay in there. He's lost sight of them now. So Blood Mostly Handsome just uh, going for those VPs time and time again and it's working out for him quite well. And Donald Gar is bleeding manpower like crazy. He's gone for an anti-tank gun which is a very bad idea against two mortars. And uh, shouldn't be necessary. Against the uh, command tank, really. Because if Blood Mostly Handsome tries to break out from his containment, you have to start spreading out, and that should open up opportunities for the Don of Guards, especially with his recon, to find weaknesses in that more spread out defense. Make a uh, decisive blow to him. But he definitely needs indirect fire. I mean, this is just really getting silly now. When you got like four or five team weapons all clumped up here. Not to get indirect fire is a crime. And as I was saying, the mortar at this stage, you're fighting it against these vetted up. Also, mortar is not going to cut the mustard. He needs a cat. He needs a... B4. And this is when you get experience this type of camp is useful. So I suppose you got a slightly better access to smoke. So it's not s such a big, such a big of a problem. But this is why you uh, keep the Calliope in, <laughs> in your commander loadout, just so you can take this kind of camp down as US forces very easily. And there he goes. This is MG42 to the Double mortars. Is he gonna no, that's a machine gun bunker there as well. So this is gonna be just about impossible to crack. It's got loads of anti-tank and now the anti-infantry as well. In the form of the machine gun bunker. Our opponents are seizing a sector. you to plant mines but it looks like blood mostly handsome wise to that game now he's got two sweeper squads and he's pushing out with them first so mine's probably not going to reap as many rewards especially because blood mostly handsome doesn't even need to really push all he needs to do is control the central and uh the vp on his side of the map Don of Gars already floating tremendous amounts of fuel and munitions, so it doesn't really matter about trying to cut off resources or anything like that at this stage. Well, that greedy was lucky to escape, and uh, likewise, this KV-1 could be deep trouble, especially if he's a target weak point that could mean a kill there. 
Sometimes, you know, a target weak point, that range may not work that well, but if you've got a grenadier nearby to uh, spot, so you guarantee that you won't lose sight of it, you should feel confident in activating it. No. As this is, uh, going to use another barrage. I suppose this is a form of indirect fire, right? But uh, this is a stage of the game where conscripts really show their weaknesses. Stand no chance at all against LMG Grenadiers. And that Don of Guards is trying to use machine guns to support, but they're just getting torn to bits by the mortar teams. And uh, after that incredibly strong start, the Don of Guards is really in deep trouble now but oh he's gone for the b4 he's got it ah he, he kind of needs two machine guns to defend it though that's the problem and his uh, forces are not strong enough to defend it, I, don't, I don't think he needs to get loads of mines down which i suppose he's kind of done already but he, i feel like Blood Mercy Handsome could just charge right down the middle and push this quite easily. He's got the LNG Grenadiers if he brings his machine gun up in support. Especially if uh, Don of Guard loses this machine gun over here. B4 looks like it's loading up a shot. Gonna target the anti tank guns. There, he does lose his machine gun. Too busy trying to... to oh, nice hit by the B4. Takes down one of the packs. Almost destroys the weapon as well. Uses the recon plane, obviously, to spot, but also increase the accuracy. Uh, much better accuracy. Uh, when you actually have sight of what you're shooting at, rather than firing into the fog of war. Guys, now pushing forwards. There's a third pack. When did he make this? Oh, I didn't expect that. And uh, KV1's going after the pack, trying to kill it, but makes it toward to the uh, forward reinforcement point there. And uh, KV1 taking a target weak point shell and needs to about face this pack. Changing it now, KV1 started accelerating away. Should be able to get away. Oh, he's getting caught. Oh man, that could have been a dead KV1. Needed to continue backing away straight rather than changing angles. Fresh KV1 came in at some stage. When did he make another KV1? Shouldn't have made another KV1. Shouldn't have made something else because. I'm just spamming anti tank guns. Damn, even shock troops would have been better. Well, anti tank gun, as I was predicting, gets decreed by the mortars. And now uh, it's going to be killed now. This did, uh, did a decent job though with its mainly with its indirect fire. To be full fire another shot, I missed it. Doesn't look like it connected with anything. Maybe it did. How many kills did he get from the other one? He got four kills <laughs> from the other shot. So it must have hit something. Very close to Vet 1, but as I say, I mean, Vet 1 doesn't really help that much. Vet 2 is a little bit better. Helps you with the scatter and rotation speed as well as recharge time, and Vet 3 is also very useless. Can need more range. It's not going to be a factor on this map.
And I believe the B4 still occupies our 20 supply. Oh no, he's sitting in front of two packs. Oh man, he's so lucky that last shot bounced. Good uh, B4 shell that time. Racks up a few more kills, but as I was saying, I feel like he just, he's losing ground. These packs keep pushing forwards. KV1 is too slow. The mortar's racking up the kills as well. And I think I think he's gonna like be unable to defend this pack out I mean this uh before. And these these KV ones, they're occupying so much repair time for these combat engineers as well. I think he's just blind firing those barrages as he advances. The enemy is taking our territory. Another recon plane coming in. Must be the B4 is ready for another shot. I mean, he's used just about all his munitions reserves now. Team weapons are a bit more spread out right now, though. Quite a bit of damage to the uh, tank, doesn't get any infantry kills, so games with a lot of veterancy, however. And close to Vet 2, that's where he wants to be. But uh, rebuilding conscripts. I suppose they're cheap to reinforce, but they stand no chance of against the LMG Grenadiers. The reason why I thought shock troops, because even though they will bleed quite hard to the mortars, they can they're very effective firing on the move and they can actually fight against the uh, bed up LNG green is. Well, I think we'll speed this one up a little bit because uh, very passive right now for both players. Whilst uh, Don of Guards repairs his tanks, waits for his B4 and but mostly handsome just trying to camp it out. With his team weapons, he's ticked to tier 4. He's building a panther now. And that's going to spell even more trouble for the KV-1s. Building more conscripts. They just... just stand no chance of working. I know that they cost less to reinforce than the shock troops, but I mean, at least they'll do something. Well, here comes the Panther. Yeah, I mean, this. See, I mean, at least shock troops could have like ran up there and done something, maybe. Teller's now going for blood, mostly handsome. He's got his uh, spawning scopes on the P4 command tank as well. That's going to help him out. Spawning scopes on his panther too. So the KV-1s could be in for a walloping here. I feel like the B4 has been uh, inactive for quite a while now. I feel like it should have been cooled down for... Decent chunk of time. Waits for another recon plane for it. Before rotating? What's he gonna, what's he gonna shoot at that needed rotation? He's gonna shoot at the base. No, he shoots at the, uses the direct fire I think. Yes, definitely use the direct fire. Lands the shot on the uh, Panther, but that's not the point of the B4. It's not to try and damage the Panther. The point of the B4 is to try and bleed as much from these team weapons as possible. Our opponents 
because uh, that Panther's just going to repair up. You know, you, now he spent his munitions. What's he really gain from that? Not much. Speed it up again. Not much going on once the Panther lines. gets repaired. We are a sector. Another B4 targeting Panther. This time, actually, probably a good idea with those pioneers repairing it. It's a few models killed there as well. <laughs> like. Bit of a bloodbath, in fact. One, two, three, four, five, six models, seven models. So yeah, seven. It was at uh, nine before, wasn't it? Enemy forces are capturing our supplies. So that time it worked out for him very nicely, and it looks like it's uh, cooldowns a lot faster now. Have hit that level of virency, so he should just be hammering him with this B4. Needs to be, next target should be these mortars. Both these VET 3 mortars are absolutely terrorizing him. And uh, if he kills the mortars, he can build some more team weapons, help himself, you know, some maybe an anti tank gun to fend off the Panther. Oh, he gets the Panther! Whoa! Well, that was a lucky shot. But now the mortars are actually in range of the B4, or just about. But the B4 is faced in a good direction for this uh, next shot to uh, take those mortars down, as long as he has sight of them. She has currently with the conscripts, needs to hit that B4 button right now. The conscripts go down. Well, the Morse gets forced away. KV one's coming in now. Before targeting, shooting. Just off target, just misses the mortar. Loses another squad of conscripts. No, oh, comm engineers. This is a bloodbath in the center. P4 command tank doing quite a lot of damage here. Take a weak point from the packs coming in. And uh, it's going to be the end of the KV-1. There it goes. Vetted up packs. Tremendous rate of fire. Before not ready to fire. Yeah, I'm not sure why he used the uh, recon plane right now. It's about on cooldown, actually. But uh, that was a bit <laughs> suicidal from the Don of Gars. I mean, he's got... Oh, no. He took friendly fire from his own mind. He's got the B-4 here doesn't need to be just throwing units into the center he's got so many VPs himself let's just allow the B4 to do its do its job here goes another tank he got aggressive with this pack pack going hard Shrix do have trouble penetrating the B4's armor though I mean uh, the KV-1's armor No, he's just about bait him over that mine. Could have been a dead grenadier squad right there. Instead, they're both going to escape on one model. B4 did take down uh, one machine gun. Looks like it's been recruited though. No, what, what, what did it take down? It took down one team weapon there, I'm sure. Oh, P4 command tank goes down, as well as the Pioneer squad. It's abandoned. Interrupted there, back to the action. Conscripts once again bleeding a lot of manpower, just suicidally trying to cap here. Like the Don of Guards just needs to uh, 
cook the beans as they say let the B4 do its job try build up a larger size army and then make a more decisive push because uh, Blood Mostly Handsome should be the one feeling the pressure right now he's so low on VPs and the B4 is just slamming him KV. If he's gonna go for the KVs, he he absolutely has to try target the packs. Because those Vet 3 packs, as you saw, just tore through him so quickly. Before stand no chance. But mostly has him well aware of the target weak point and he's making good use of it so far. P4 command tank limping away to safety and uh, Blood Mostly has him getting very close. To another panther. Oh no, he loses his conscripts. His vet three cons go down. B4 should be ready to fire, yep. Good hit. D crews one of the packs. The uh I think they're both vet three actually after their last engagement. It is coming forward, it's gonna get a Faust off. KV1 is backing away once again, but I mean they're taking so much damage, it's gonna take an eternity to repair them. Shrek Squad's getting aggressive now. P4 ready to fire once again. Oh, what's he doing with his packs? Way too far forwards. And this is the juicy B4 shot right here. Oh, ho, ho. knocks out that pack. And in fact, that's both packs down right now. Koskov's managed to flank around, take out the machine gun. So a few things going right here for the Don of Gars. B4 continues to hammer away 43 kills I mean he got it a bit late but it's been putting in the work and as I was saying on a map like this I mean reasonably easy to defend and uh, it's not the longest maps so uh, the scatter has actually been quite good so far it's been landing a lot of shots 43 kills very impressive definitely paid for itself Especially when two of those kills have been tanks. Panther in the command tank. Continuing to build conscripts. Those mortars continuing. Look at that. 24 and 45 kills. Same amount of kills basically as the B4 on that mortar team. Just shows uh, how suicidal the Don of Gus conscript usage has been. Blind shot that time. Scatter a bit unfavorable which still gets a couple pioneer models and here come the packs charging straight up the center before uh oh kv1 in deep deep trouble trying to flank around but panzgrid is going to get some rear armor hits on him here one of the packs goes down and there goes uh, the kv1 Probably kill this pack now. Doesn't want to risk it being uh, recruited, and he's trying to hold the line here. Oh, oh, close call. Both the screen is extremely lucky to survive there. Bad time to back off his KV-1 there. Could have wiped one of those squads. He chased. P4 command tank. The abandoned one's finally been repaired. Took forever. Ready to go again. But uh, the Don of Gars has been bleeding so much from these conscripts. It's really struggling to 
build himself an army, he also lost the KV-1 there. Okay, these mortars should be in trouble. Just misses, fires deep. The way that uh, indirect fire works is they tend to overshoot slightly. So sometimes, you know, you may want to target like slightly in front of your targets. Like, you know, they give you a circle to indicate like where the barrage is going to land, but that circle's not really accurate anyway. KV-1 desperately trying to hold the line here. B4 looks like it's going to go for a direct shot, perhaps. There goes the KV-1. B4 in deep, deep trouble. <laughs> oh, direct shot. Takes care of the P4 command tag, but now he's got nothing to stop this infantry. This is where he needs the machine gun. Uses for Mother Russia before taking a lot of damage from the P, P Green Shreks. Machine gun being brought up in this push. Nicely done there by Blood Mostly Handsome. And uh, without that B4, the Don of Gars in deep, deep trouble. Feels himself another KV-1. She's probably going to force these squads away, but his army size is very, very small. Currently about half, half that of blood mostly hands. So at least he picks up one of the LMG Greens there. And one of the Pioneers, okay. So he's, uh, he's not out of this one yet, but he is in, he's on death's door. He is in deep, deep trouble. That B4 was what he was relying on. Gets this heavy team weapon play. And uh, that's exactly why you need a machine gun. Probably would have died to the double mortars, but... Maybe not. But yeah, I mean, going, going for those KV ones again and again, I mean... They just take so long to repair. The anti-infantry is just not that good either. And uh, they're, they're quite expensive, honestly. Like The amount of KV-1s he's built, he could have ticked to tier 4 and uh, built T-34s instead. T-34s better anti-infantry because of the uh, machine gun. It's better, better than the KV-1s. And uh, a lot cheaper survivability not that much difference either one more shot to kill but uh, because they're so much faster could perhaps outmaneuver these packs T-34s maybe, you know, with their faster move speed might have been able to actually strike at these double mortars. Which have, I'm sure, racked up even more kills. 28 and 48 now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my God. 31. Don of Gars in deep, deep trouble. Looks like he's going to try and make a push out on the left hand side. Oh, he lost a squad of conscripts there. Doesn't really need to worry about capping his fuel. I'm not sure why he's even bothering trying to cap that. Both players have a massive fuel surplus. Uh oh, he's about to run over this telemine. The only telemine I think he's planted. No, he skates around it very close, trying to flank the machine gun. He's got a recon plate coming in and another KV-1 so he's going to try and avoid the anti-tank gun 
In fact, it actually, actually gets decrewed very close to the base, though. Second KV-1 needs to join the fun. Rear armor exposed. Oh, if you ran over that Talamine, there was almost certain death there. Second KV-1 coming in now. Machine gun has been stolen. Going to suppress these squads. And uh, that's actually going to be perhaps the winning formula for him here. No, oh, I thought I thought he's going to be able to get up the center, but he can't because the mortars with the extended barrage range from base stopping the cap once again. Oh, that could be death. Oh, that was a big hit. That was a monster. Panther being built though. Okay, everyone's trying to kill the pack. And uh, unsuccessful tricks come up now, forcing them back. Panther just about completed as well. Cowboy finally <laughs> he danced around it several times, finally runs over it. With one KV-1 against the Panther, he is gonna go down. He's just gotta try and get those VPs off the board. 54 left. Maybe if he sends these conscripts out here, maybe he can get the triple cap going, get the get the drain complete before the Panther seals the game. Former blood mostly handsome. Yep, triple cap looking likely and uh, probably going to maintain it here because of the machine gun out on this flank. Madison to field himself another KV-1. No, that got decurred almost instantly by the double mortars. And uh, capping going on in the center for Blood Mostly Handsome. He knows the clock is against him right now. 33 VPs left. One of the KV-1s gets a flank off on the Panther. Another one going to the other flank, trying to stop. Trying to stop the cap. He's throwing it all in for these VPs, just trying to get those last 24 VPs off. Trying to stop this cap at any cost. Needs to get these conscripts into the center. One of the KV-1s goes down. It's away that squad. He's 16 VPs remaining. This KV-1 has to stop this cap. Green is not in the capping circle though. 10 VPs left. Is he going to cap the center? Conscript's getting there. Going to stall the cap. 6 VPs. Molotovs. Oh man, that will allow them to start waiting. Mortar's now facing up. Let's start raining in the death. Two VPs. Bundle grenade. Oh! And he wins. Whoa! Somehow the Donna Gauss pulls that one out in a desperate last minute capping fest. What a close game. The B4 was very good this game. So were these mortars. These were insanely good. 31 and uh, 52 kills between them. Now what, uh, kept blood mostly handsome in the game. Don't know, guys, probably should have gone for the B4 a bit earlier instead of that second KV-1. And uh, maybe should have gone for T-34s instead of KV-1s, just because of their lower, lower cost, better anti-infantry capabilities, higher maneuverability, and uh, also play too aggressively. Should have just you know sat back, let his B4 do the work for a bit longer instead of trying to continuously push in with this army every single time. Well, I'll wrap on that guys. If you like your game, we cuss by me. Details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you off the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.